Okay, we're rolling. Yeah. I know, I, I, the nerd in me is like... Talking about moving on to the bigger or thrill seeking posters. Are you about to touch on 2025? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> the, the year's not even confirmed, guys. That's just. <laughs> so, Grace, I have a question for you because in this year for Chain, a lot of the other CFR parks are going to be connected with a shop of policy there. You know, people of a certain age need to be escorted around the park by events. Is there anything you can speak of to the future of that? Opening, um, I guess it's, it's Scotia Bank Day, but we're here with Grace Peacock, the celebrity of Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> I'm not cool with the term celebrity. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys throw that around. You know, I'm just, I'm just Grace. I'm just Grace. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Grace Peacock of Canada's Wonderland. Uh, what is some of the things you do? I know a lot of you already know this, but I feel like I have to introduce exactly what you do for Canada's Wonderland in every video, just in case there's new people. Yeah, that's good. So I'm the director of communications. Park, and uh, that means a whole bunch of things. Like I am, I'm the spokesperson for the park, so I'll do all the media interviews. Um, I take care of uh, uh, our charity programs here at the park, also digital marketing. So uh, our website, social media, our influencer program, um, mobile app, all kinds of things. So we have lots of channels. Essentially, I'm, I'm telling the story of the park and sharing it with the world in a variety of ways. She's also responsible for idiots like us. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> All right, well, we are standing here for a specific reason here at Lazy Bear Lodge. Why don't we go into a few of the new things coming for the 2023 season here at Lazy Bear Lodge? At the restaurant specifically? I guess the restaurant and maybe its surrounding area? Oh, this, okay, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, so as you know, Lazy Bear Lodge opened up in the latter half of last year. So it's still really new. We still have a lot of um, awareness to do with the restaurant. It's just like everybody knows, has to know that it's here and it's got these amazing homemade menus. And, um, but this year, one of the new things we're bringing in is uh, VIP experiences for our fireworks nights. So the t details have yet to be released, but essentially you're going to be able to um, purchase a VIP package. It's going to include some food and some really premium viewing spots here over there upstairs uh, to see the fireworks which take off right over there behind you so it's going to be a great option for people as you know um, at least we're lodges on the vortex hill where everybody used to sit on the grass so i know some people are mourning the loss of that but these new vip packages are going to be really great and they're going to be the best seats in the house to see the fireworks. I know he is excited. He right. wants to buy the package Are already. I, I honestly, I was talking to Brendan about it, and um, I, 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 I want to get. I think it looks really You've had experience at least once, right? That's yeah. Donna, I want to sit like right there, right in front of it, and then they said something about like food and everything. Like, yeah. Uh, so, like, sitting there with like, the fire, like just eating, watching the fireworks, that'd be so cool. Yeah. It's, gonna be it's a stroke of genius. <laughs> Capitalize on that. <laughs> so we have obviously noticed some improvements, significant improvements, I would call them, in the food at Canvas Wonderland. Um, it's more specifically, I've seen a snack plan evolving at Canvas Wonderland. I was wondering if you could provide any further details on if Wonderland is going to start introducing a snack plan on the season pass, if you're able to, if you're not, but also maybe touch a little bit on some of the new food options the park is exploring. Sure. Yes, I can't speak to a snack plan product per se at this point, but it's true. Wait, there's there's more snack things. Um, you're probably referencing the new Caribou Crossing. <laughs> yes. So that is that used to be the Smoker Burger and Beer Bar uh, up in Frontier Canada, and now there's a whole array of like fried goods and like there's a fried zucchini sticks and fried pickles. And, yeah, it's, it looks. It's if you're not looking for a full meal, it's going to be a great option. We'll just grab something and go and have some shareables, right? So. Um, you know, food is always a long-term plan, and 
um, it's always been in the works to elevate the food experience here at the Park Square Place Deer Lodge. There are food festivals that happen in the summer. Um, you know, the park is not just about pizza and hot dogs. Yes, it's about the funnel cakes, but you know, there's a lot of other dessert options here too, right? So, and it's, it's it always comes back to the guest experience and adding to value for those people who are buying tickets or buying season classes and coming. So, um, yes, we have some new uh, menu items across the park at various different places. Um, little twist of things, like um, we're going to have two, two different kinds of fries, which just seems like a little thing, but it makes a big difference. If you were in the podcast last night, everyone's flipping their lid over the waffle fries. Oh, yeah. the waffle fries, yes, yes. Well, there is one other kind of fry too that I'll let you guys find out. Uh, anyway. But, um, you can't do that. Really you can't do that. 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 You can not do that you can not do that you can not do that a whole bunch of other dishes I can't pronounce, so I'm not going to make sure you can the culture today. But um, it, those are always fun events, too, because we tie in uh, live performances and decor is great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Honestly, Wonderland does a really good job with the food festival, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Me too. So, Grace, I have a question for you because it is here for chain. A lot of the other cedar for parks have been implementing a shackle policy where you know people of a certain age need to be escorted around the park by adults. Is there anything you can speak of to the future of the Yeah, I don't have anything I can share specific to the chaperone policy, but it is always a focus of ours to protect the guests. So for those of you who have watched yesterday's video, or two days ago's video, I don't know when this is getting posted, um, there was a huge emphasis and improvement around the park on um, what I would call beautification. I almost called it a small reno of Canada's Wonderland. There's a lot of enhancements in everywhere, the most I've ever seen in my history right here. Um, so I was just wondering, like, hey, look, what's happening? Because it's, it's really showing me looks really good in the park now. Really good. Yeah, I know that. Uh, you know, um, every department has really been working full tilt for this season, and I mean, you know, working on infrastructure is a long-term thing as well. You know, uh, fixing up. If we're a forty-two-year-old park, yeah, forty-two-year-old park, right? Nineteen eighty-one, we opened, so a lot of original infrastructure is still here. Um, a lot of original rides are still here, and everything needs TLC. You know, um, in an ongoing basis, so. Um, I'm glad that you're noticing some of the changes, right? Like painting, or yeah, like, like, seeing. like International Street had like new stucco, like even the painting on rides, and it's it's a lot. Like even there's a lot of ride enhancements that I don't only an enthusiast would notice, but yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm glad. You, I've never seen um, people work so hard as I have here at this park. Um, in any previous job I've had, it's just like. And they're, they're so driven by the dedication to guests, and it's just such a positive energy before the park opens. Uh, people are working long hours. You know, we have people here all over the place for weekends trying to get ready and do those little things that I think overall make a big difference. Maybe not, maybe a little convenient to see. You guys know this because you're here all the time. But um, I think just if it's in people's world, you just feel better about your park. You know? And it all goes back to that guest Yeah, you 
just to further expand off that, like we went across the U.S. on a little road trip, and this park is the most ready out of any park you visited, I visited. By far. By, by far. far. Like for a season, so yeah, it speaks well, volumes. I know everybody's just working their butts off. <laughs> um, and, you know, in all kinds of weather as well. Like I can't, I can't say how much respect I have for. I sit in my office, like you know, but like everybody else is out in the park. You know, rides, ops are training and maintenance people here on the new rides and painting and fixing things up. And it's a lot of hard work, um, but they care about what they do. They care about the work. They care about the guests. It shows. Alrighty, uh, we're obviously here to cover Yukon Striker. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Nothing <laughs> happening. Nothing to see. Nothing back to there. see, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Grace. Obviously, there's a big new structure. You just said an interesting back though. Yes. So, Tundra Twister, everybody knows this big new ride. It's actually two meters shorter than Wonder Mountain. Just two meters. So, you're going to be seeing up that high, up that almost as high as Wonder Man, and it is conceited. Like, I was so amazed when I could see it on my way. You can see it for like major miles. It's a matter of going below. So, they're obviously not ready for opening yet. Is there any timeline as to when these two new rides, we'll talk about the other one in a sec, might be ready? We are still currently working towards opening. So that's May, true, that's May true. May 5th, May 5th is our target. Um, I will say, you know, keep an eye on our social media because we are going to let people know, um, you know, when we're in, when we're in other things are like shifting. Um, we have been messaging May 5th already on our social media accounts, but um, we're probably going to be sending a note to Seasons Pass to just remind them that they're not going to be ready for Seasons Pass for preview. Ah! Your pass holders so you can come back anytime and right when they are ready. So. <laughs> The only time I'm ever mad at Yukon Striker oh, yeah. is right now. <laughs> I'm never mad at Yukon. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. I love this. This was brilliant. All this design right here. So, Snoopy's Racing Railway, we checked it out. It is stunning. Like, I actually think it's going to be the park's most beautiful attraction. Oh. I know that might be a little controversial, <laughs> but um, it seems to be the perfect fit for that area. Do you have any information on Snoopy's Racing Railway that maybe we don't know? Oh, I don't know if I have anything you don't know. Um, I know that we're, we're all very excited for it, to, to give something to the kids, you know? Like, um... Um, yeah, I, everybody remembers their first coaster experience. Like, mine was Coaster Coaster, but I don't know what you guys... Coaster Coaster. Coaster Coaster. I think four times. Oh, he just went. Yeah, he just dove jumped right, right up the level. My dad was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those those are like special memories, right? Like, so for the the newest generation, um, Snoopy's Racing Railway may very well be like the first coaster experience for them now, which is so cool um, to be able to expand that experience. Because I know I, we're always talking about the big thrill rides. What's the new big coaster coming? And it's like, no, we don't. We can't forget about our littlest guests because um, overall, we want to try to be the so, we were just informed by Grace Peacock that there might be a, well there is, a 4 p.m. onward ticket option now. Yes, yeah, those are up on our website now. This is brand new for this year. Uh, it's a discounted ticket if people are just looking to come experience the, the park at night. And like you guys know, like a night experience at the park is very different, right? Like riding the rides at night is so cool. Seeing the, the skyline of the city around and all the night lights. It's a lot of fun, and, and you know, this way people can come if they don't want to commit to a full day or don't want to have to pull the, pay the full price of coming. Of, they're just coming for a few hours. We now have that ticket available. That's awesome. Yeah. We also just got a little. We missed it yesterday, but there's a new restaurant replacing La Cantina. Yeah. So, uh, Mediterranean Kitchen is the name of uh, the new restaurant there. It's Greek themed, so. There's some souvlaki dishes, there's going to be a moussaka dish as well, which I've never tried and really, really intrigued by that. You've had it before, right? You guys had it at back really, really yeah. Good, yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be exciting. All right. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people find really exciting. Uh, there's some new Halloween haunt investments. We haven't seen that in quite some time, obviously, because of things that happen globally. Um, but do you have any information on these new Halloween haunt mazes or additions? So I don't have a lot that I can I can share, although it's 
there are four new ones and one of them is called Dark Ride and uh, if you guys are familiar with what kind of things I've got thank you you got your um, yeah so it's it's a, a creepy abandoned carnival ride attraction that guests end up wandering into and there's all kinds of So that's pretty much it, but we're, we're looking to uh, expand some of the immersive areas and scare zones and then bring in those four mazes and just keep things freshened up. Day of the Dead is returning as well. Did you guys like that last yeah. year? Yeah, that was oh, very immersive. I, I like the that. theming in the area. I like, I love that. Yeah, cool. the little food, the patio area, yeah. and then the parade that the performers did at the end. I love the masks. Yes, awesome. yes. It was yeah. popular too. Yeah. So, I know Halloween is really far away, and so is Winterfest. <laughs> We're already talking about it because you know, get those gold passes or platinum passes, and you get all of it. So yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that seems to be everything new. I feel like we're gonna forget something, but that's okay. Um, that's it for the 2023 season. I guess moving on to 2024. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs>